Hello and welcome to the third episode, episode hashtag number two of building a assembly game. So yeah, thank you for being here, thank you for tuning in. This week we're going to have a little look at continuing with our assembler and we're also going to be focusing on maybe improving the, uh, maybe just making some minor adjustments and making some improvements to the memory map that we have designed for our automatons. So I think to make a start, the most prevalent thing would be if we maybe have a look at what we did last week. So if we have a little look at our assembler, what we did was we defined all of our valid opcodes and then we created a dictionary that linked all of our opcodes to their correct machine code and then we started to write this assemble function and in this assemble function we were checking various opcodes so for example we were checking opcodes that didn't require any operands and we were saying if we have any of those opcodes op then just grab them and convert them to machine code and put them into our machine code array and then the next thing we did was we had a look at passing binary strings and passing hex strings for our dat operand. Now there was a couple of changes I wanted to make to this, but I think before we do, let's just have a little look at this running. So I think we had no op um, clear flags push and pop. And if we assemble them, uh, we need to select an automaton first. I might set a selected automaton by default so I stop making that mistake. So we can have uh, no op, push, pop, and clear flags. If we assemble that, then we see instruction here, no op, our op code, 4 bit op code is 0000. zero, zero, zero which is correct as per our dictionary here. So dat is 0000. zero, zero, zero. And we have 0011 for push, 0100 zero, zero, zero for pop. We've got push and pop here, 0011, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero. And finally, we had the clear flags, which I believe is one 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 so we've started to build our assembler our other thing the other thing we did last week was we built dat and we could pass in a binary string or we could pass in a hex string so this would be three three so if we assemble that you can see that we've got zero 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 which is our no op but instead of having an empty opcode, we've passed in all of this data. And I've just thought that we might have an issue with no op having... Oh no, no, that'll be absolutely fine because it'll be a no op. Cool, so we know that 33 hex is equivalent to 0011 in binary. So we know that these two lines are equivalent and we're able to assemble them correctly. So one of the things I mentioned last week as I was working was what uh, what we could, well, I was trying to work out what we could add in as additions to our architecture. So we have this memory map here and uh, as I said last week we were looking at memory mapping our registers so if you if you had load F F8, for example, that would mean load the B register into the A register. Um, if you had STAFB, that would store in the HR register. So these are, if you, when you define, when you write assembly code instructions, if you said LDAB, that would get stored as the LDA instruction in memory plus F8, the binary value 11111000. So it'll get stored 
at location F8. And then what we would do is in real architecture, if we were building this for real, we would attach the B register to that memory address. I don't know how practical that is in real life. I don't know if that's how it actually works, but um, this was the only way I could think of getting this working. One of the other things we talked about last week was what about the possibility? We've got this movement control and um, proximity sensors and I've defined how they work here. So we've got the movement control where you can control whether we're going to move left, right, up or down by writing specific values to um, memory location F0. And then we also have our sensors F1 and F2, which will have data read into them that specifies whether the automaton has anything next to it. Now, I also said that I liked the idea of having some sort of painting. And I think I know what that's going to look like. So our painting, we're going to have two sensors for this. Uh, we're going to have two, two memory locations defined for the painting. And we're going to have um, paint read and paint write. And the reason we're going to have read and write is we want to know whether the memory, lo the square we're currently on, we want to know the color of the square we're currently on. And we also want to be able to write the color of the square we're currently on. And I also had ideas for these other two registers, which means we've, uh, predefined memory locations, which means we've only got one memory mapped address left, which is F7. So for F5 and F6, I wanted to have the grid X location and grid Y location. Now, I was considering doing these as individual, uh, as one combined location with four bits each. However, if we have a quick look here, I think this is a 32 by 32 grid. So if we only had four bits for the X and four bits for the Y, we would be limited to only having a 16 by 16 play area. Doing it this way, by assigning eight bits, AKA an address per, just an address per X and per Y, we have the option to have eight bits in there, which gives us the possibility of having a 256 by 256 game area. Now, as for the paint read and paint write, what I wanted the paint write to look like was, and I think I'm gonna, gonna do this off screen, AKA through the week. Evening Luke, thanks for joining. So I think what I'm going to do is is write the details of this off screen in, in the full details of this off screen. But what I was essentially thinking is we would have um, a memory location like this and we'll have eight memory locations within it. And the first bit here would be right so if this is a one then it would actually fill in a space so anytime this is a zero it wouldn't fill in the space this one here is going to be clear so this would say if this is a one clear the color to white or transparent or whatever the default color is on the current square that i'm in and then we've got when we're writing the color will come from here and we've got R, G, and B. And for each of those, we've got two bits. So we've actually got combination, like for example, one zero would be half red plus 75% green plus 25% blue. So if you had this value read into this register, this would say write the color that is 50% red, 100% green, 25 25% uh, blue. I think that's how that's going to work. And the 
read is going to be similar apart from the fact those first two bits aren't going to do anything. So that's what I think the... So we're, we're filling up this reserved memory and that's good. Um, what I might do is I do have this timer in the timer interrupt. I'm not sure how useful that actually is going to be. So we might end up changing that in future. But for now, I'm going to leave it as it is. The other thing I wanted to not even add, but change. This is a, this is a change to the architecture is we've currently got clear flags here. I've decided what's going to be more useful is if we have an operation for doing a shift. A, a register shift and I've been trying to work out the best way of doing this because I was thinking we could have 1111 the opcode as being some sort of logical operation yeah being some sort of logical operation command and then we could attach a load of different things to this so we could say like make the a register rotate or make the a register shift left or make the a register shift right but i don't think that we've got enough different operations that we'd want with that so i think what i'm thinking instead here is what's the what's the op code is it lsl logical shift left lsl assembly LSL is a logical shift left by 0 to 31 places. So we could just have this as LSL. And for now, I'm going to leave it without any more details of the implementation. Because I'm thinking, do we want to pass in an operand, and the operand is the number of places to shift, or do we want to pass in a memory location, and we shift that memory location one place to the left? The only problem is here is we've got LSL, but we don't have... LSR, which would be logical shift right. So do I get rid of the positive branch? And do I replace the positive branch with logical shift right? Because I think that branch always and branch zero, JMP and JZ, are the only two that we need. Or would we want to swap JZ for JNZ, jump not zero? Luke, have you got any opinions on this? I'm going to take my jumper off in a second. Have you got any opinions on this? While I take my jumper off, write in chat. Do you think we need a positive branch and a zero branch? Or should I get rid of the positive branch and replace it with a logical shift right? And if I do that, do I also want to get swap JZ to jnz jump not zero i'm going to take my jumper off if you're there write and chat while i do it Right, I haven't got anything in chat, so I'm assuming that means that I'm on my own. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is I am going to make the change. I'm going to get rid of JP. So, instead, we're going to take... JZBRZ. We're going to move it up. To 
take LSL. Oh, undo that. Oh, undo that. <laughs> I'm going to put it in here. Take logical shift left. Move that up here. And then we're going to have logical shift right. Just looking something up. Oh, Luke is looking something up. Cool. In the. Well, I'm probably doing this wrong then. I've made a decision where you're just going to stick with. I don't, is it, I, I don't know if it's Turing complete anymore. That's the only problem. That's the only problem is I don't know if this is now cheering complete. I think it is because I think you can do everything that you need to with Jay-Z and BRZ. Um, I'm not 100% certain. That's the only problem is I don't know for sure. So, yeah, Luke, <laughs> you look that up. In the meantime, what we can do, I mean, we can't really make any changes to what we've already got. We can get rid of CLF for definite, because I think we know for a fact we're not using CLF. We're not going to be using clear flags. I do want these logical shift operations. I think that having these logical shift operations is going to be super useful. And I did think that we could get away with just using logical shift left, but I've reflected and realized that we can't achieve everything we need with just logical shift left. We'd also need logical shift right, because logical shift left, the logical shift left will bring in a zero. It doesn't wrap, it's not a rotate. Why did I decide on a 4-bit assembly language? <laughs> I want What I want is I want to have as much versatility with this as we possibly can have. I want to be able to do everything. And that means making sure that the assembly instruction set is not only Turing complete, but also offers flexibility so that we don't have to do... Like, you could achieve a logical shift left, I think, using... I mean, you could definitely write an algorithm in assembly using just and or... XOR that achieved a logical shift. But that would potentially be really complicated to do. And in cases, so where I'm thinking about this being useful, what is something like, so we've got now, let's say we have, so the reason, the reason I've been thinking about this is, imagine we took the number of positions here and we halved them so we just go to 16 by 16 instead uh, where is the number of grid squares set so let's say the number of grid, grid squares is set to 16 LSL is just times 2 and LSL is just divided by 2 yes so that's what the logical shifts are um, my, my main question Luke is if we just have JMP and JZ, are we still Turing complete? Which I think we are. But there must be a reason that traditional assembly languages use JNZ instead of JZ. As in jump not zero instead of jump zero. Luke's got an idea. I'm going to wait for this. In the meantime, let's change the number of grid squares to 16. So, I mean, that looks like ass. Um, didn't do, I've not written that programmatically in the way I thought I had. Either way. So, let's say we've got 16 grid squares. And the original Mario, if we go to our website, Learn Game Boy, where you can learn how to write assembly code for the Game Boy. Uh, if we go look at the screen section, and we have an example image here where you can see that Mario is made up of four 8 by 8 sprites, which means he's 16 by 16.
The problem with JPF Luke would be then have the flags register have a flag for positive, negative, and zero. The the only problem with that is we need we've got twelve bits. So J, J, um, Lucas said have JP and JPF where JP f is jump on flag and specify which flag the problem there is that we've got 12 bits to store our opcode and our operand if our jpf for example opcode is four bits the eight remaining eight bits has to be um, the memory address or in the instruction memory where we're jumping to and that needs to be eight bit otherwise you'd only be able to jump to the first half so we can't do it like that because you wouldn't be able to specify which flag to jump on. Uh, I feel like I should have done some more reading before I, I started this today. I'm thinking out loud. Um, but yeah, I think what I might do is I'm going to stick with this. And then over the week, I'm going to do some reading. And I'm going to double check whether having just JMP and JZ is Turing complete. And if it is, we'll stick with it. If it isn't, we might have to make some changes next week. But back to the reason that I was thinking about having this logical shift operation in is I was thinking, so if you look here, uh, Game Boy Graphics has four bits. We've got a clear bit, we've got a black bit, we've got a dark green and a light green. Now, if we had 16 by 16, pixels I in my head I was thinking how do we write a program for an automaton to draw Mario and if we had 16 by 16 that'd be 256 colors and we'd need to store 256 colors and we've only got 256 memory locations so if we wanted to store the image of Mario we would have all of our data taken up So what I was thinking instead was, what if we specified memory addresses where, our, where we defined the colors we were using, and then we only used four bits, uh, uh, two bits per color, you could store in each memory location where you've got eight bits, you could store four colors, which means you'd only need 64 memory locations to store all of the Mario image data of the Mario color data and then maybe you could do some sort of like repetition or we could do some tile mapping like they do on the Game Boy something like I'm sure that but basically I was trying to think like one of the programs I'd like to write for this like a demo program would be have an automaton move along like this and row by row draw Mario by changing colors and the only way we'd be able to achieve that would be if we had multiple colors uh, if we had multiple colors stored in the same uh, memory location. So what I was then thinking was, well, if I've got these two bits here and these two bits here, like how do I isolate the two bits? And I was thinking having a right shift or a left shift logical operation would be a really easy way of getting it where you needed it to be. So that's why I've now decided <laughs> that I think we should have left shift and, and right shifts included in the assembly language. So anyway, that's that's how this came about. I think I'm happy with this for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove. Let's make a start by making a few changes to the assembler. So we're going to get rid of CLF. We're going to get rid of JPBRP. JPBRP has got rid of. We're going to have 1101 for J JZ and BRZ and then our two new instructions were LSL and LSR LSL will be 1110 LSR will be 1111 And then we need to get rid of clear flags from there. 
So yeah, I think that you will have logical shift left, and it will say logical shift left this memory location. So you could, for example, logical shift left B if you wanted to register B, or you could logical shift left memory location 80. Um, I'm happy with that. So the next thing I wanted to do, I'm going to actually put my iPad away for now and I really want to focus on doing some coding tonight. So the next thing I really wanted to do was start getting this assembler fleshed out. So we have a check for the dat opcode here and I think that all we need to do is just keep working through ink and deck are nice to have but not necessary. You could always replace ink and deck with LSL and LSR as you can do them with add and sub by one. Yes, yes, that's a good shout. The reason that I actually included increment and decrement was because I was thinking it would be really nice. If, so say, for example, you wanted to increment like uh, so say you've got HL, the, uh, the memory address register and you're iterating through memory locations if you wanted to add to hl you would have to do lda hl add one sda hl so you'd have to do three assembly code calls just to do that really simple thing and you would also then need to store one in memory as a data location so that's just for doing that one operation, you've got four lines of execution, which I think is a little bit overcomplicated. Whereas if you just wanted to update the address pointer, then I want you to be able to say increment HL or increment the value at this address, and it just increments that that value. Um, that's the reason that I've added ink and deck. But yes, you are right. They are they're superfluous, so we could definitely get rid of them if we needed to. However, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spend a bit of time reading this week and double check whether just having BRA and BRZ makes us Turing complete, which I think it does. And if that if that ensures Turing completeness, then I'm happy. Uh, I'm not too bothered about making any other changes. So what's our, where are we up to? So let's just try this and let's make sure that we can't do CLF anymore. But we can do, I haven't checked that they're valid yet. Um, I've not written any validation for our new ones. So where are we up to? We've got DAT and we've got no op sorted. So let's do LDA and STA now. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dictionary. And we're going to call this our memory map. And this is going to map all of the memory locations that we've predefined to their correct locations. And I feel like, yeah, I'll do this as I'll do this as binary. So I'm actually getting my iPad back out, although there's no point plugging it in. So our memory map has the movement control which we don't want to map do you know what Let, let's not have this as our memory map let's this is have our let's have this as our register map so we're going to map yes yeah i think i think that let's let's make sure this is Turing complete so luke's just said um if it doesn't work if it's not Turing complete we can always make that decision and i think yeah um it's what we've got at the minute is is quite nice in terms of our assembly instructions. I'd, I'd like to stick with it if we can. So let's have our B register mapped, C register, F register, HL, PC, and HL, like that. And then we're going to map these to F8, which is 11111000, one, 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 zero, zero, zero. 
F9, which is 11111001. So let's grab this. 010011100101. So HL is F13, uh, FC, FD. Yes. Cool. So we've got our register map here. So this is mapping our registers to the, the memory locations. And we might create a reverse of this for doing a reverse lookup as well. Um, but we will do that when we actually write the execution portion of our FDE cycle. So the first thing we're going to want to do is work out a way of saying load a register into load a register into our accumulator. So opcode equals LDA and I think the STA is exactly the same. I think these two will work identically to each other. In fact I'm trying to think if there's anything else that will also work it identically. I mean, maybe LDA STA push and pop. We want to be able to push registers and pop registers. So yes, push and pop would be they would be different because we don't want standard memory locations to be applicable for push and pop. Add sub ink deck and or XOR. In fact, basically everything Yeah, basically everything. Um, what I haven't added yet is labels. We need to think about how we're going to add assembly labels at some point. That one's going to be a little bit difficult to do. It's not a problem that I'm even considering attempting to solve right now. So let's start with LDA and STA and then we can at least move in forwards. At least, at least moving forwards we can then work out whether we need to make, make any changes to add labels in or whether we can add other other opcodes into this. So we've got LDA and STA and we want to check first whether um, we want we want some valid registers. as a map and we're just going to have uh, an array here because we want to check. I don't know if this is duplicating or not. I don't know if I can do this with the dictionary but I know it's fairly simple if I do it like this. So so valid registers are B, C, F, H, L. Can you interact with the program counter? You shouldn't be able to write direct to the program counter, should you? No. And HL. So those are our valid registers. And we're going to say if opcode dot two uppercase, how do we do two uppercase in JavaScript? JavaScript to uppercase. Yeah, I think it's just dot two uppercase. And we're going to see if that is included in the valid registers. And I've just realized, have I done this in the 
wrong place. It looks like I have. This wants to go. Here. So if the opcode is LDA or the opcode is STA, then what do we want to do? We check if it's uh, a valid register. And then we're going to get the opcode dot two uppercase, and we're going to add it to the. So how do we do this? We took machine code. There we are. So we're going to take machine code I, and we're going to convert the opcode to machine code, and then we're going to add to it. register map opcode dot to uppercase and that needs to be surrounded by brackets cool so let's try this god it's hard to jump straight back into this so let's do LDA HL and that is throwing an error for some reason what is the error Opcode dot two uppercase is not a function. Okay, that works. So what's wrong with opcode here? There, uh, that'd be operand. I'm an idiot. That would be upper end. Uh, but I don't think that fixes the problem. Append upper end two uppercase is not a function. Well, we've got our first person in chat of the night. There we go, hidden them. So, I know this is just me staring at a screen at the minute. Not the most exciting stream. So, operand.2 uppercase, why is that not valid? Because we have pulled out our operand, haven't we? Operand equals components 1. Let's just do a console.log operand. At least we know that it's picking up on the opcode correctly. HL. Let's grab that. So document that is load HL zero dot split at the space is that location one is that dot two upper case. Am I just calling the wrong function name? Yeah, what an idiot. It's two upper case. Not to uppercase, it's to upper case. So if we do LDAHL, then cut set properties of undefined setting instructions. Uh, of course we can't because we need to select this LDAHL symbol. Boom! Zero 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 one, which is LDA, 
and then we've got one 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 zero one one which is HL so let's try all of ours so LDAB LDAC my iPad so I can actually see them LDAB LDAC LDA LDA F and in fact F we don't want to be a valid register because we don't want you to be able to write to the flag register obviously so LDA F LDA HL LDA HL assemble that and yes we get zero one zero 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 one zero zero one one zero one 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 zero one Yeah, okay, that suits me. So that's load working and then STA B, STA C, STA HL, STA HL. All of them should work. Yes, and we've got star 0010 instead of load 001, 0001. And then finally, what else do we need here? So we need to test LDAF one zero one zero. That's not right, that shouldn't have worked. Oh, it's because I've not refreshed this. So if we try LDA F, that should not work. Cool. That's perfect. Um, so let's do an else here. And we want to check if the operand zero is valid hex or binary so it must be a register B C H L H L be a register thingy or thingy and then I think that should all work however um, we've definitely got some repetition here with getting these binary and hex strings do I care enough to fix that now no no I don't care enough to fix that right now so now we should be able to say something along the lines of LDA Hashtag um, E3. No. What's the problem there? The uh, concept property is undefined saying instructions. LDA hashtag E3. Assemble that. It's 0, 0, 0, 001 and then E1110. Yes, 30011. Perfect. And we should also be able to do the load percent one zero one 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 zero one we get one zero one 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 zero one zero one and if we try and do anything other than that it won't assemble and we get an error on line three provided data must be eight bit binary or two digit hex uh, A register, 8-bit binary, or two-digit hex. Error on line 1, provided date must be a register, 8-bit eight eight binary, must be a register, 8-bit binary, or two-digit hex. Cool. So that is LDA and STA done. We've got them assembling. Fine, that's great. Um... So our other 
operands. We've got push pop. That will be only for valid registers. Add sub increment decrement and or XOR I think are all identical to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say constant register. Uh, we've got another one of them in chat. Menu hide user on this chat. There we go. So what we're going to do is write write a list of opcodes that I can have a register hex or binary. And that's going to be LDA STA not push and pop that'll be register only add sub ink deck and or XR And the problem is that we're also going to want labels for these, but we're not going to build labels in now. We will do them later. So that's register hex our binary codes, our binary op codes. In fact, I'm just going to do them in line. I'm just going to do them in line so that it's really obvious what's going on. Our op code equals add. Sub ink deck and or XR. I know it's messy, but I just want to do it like that. Sue me. And let's get rid of that. And then we're going to repeat the same thing like this. We're going to get rid of everything but push and pop. And these don't have valid addresses. It's just like that. Um, we do technically have a way of pushing No, we've already said push and pop. Pop are just the A register, right? Yeah, yeah. Push and pop are just for the A register. Yeah, we don't want to do the other registers with them because otherwise that's going to get super confusing. Cool, right. So we've got LDA, STA, add, sub, ink, deck, and, or, and XR all done. So we could say, for example, load um, zero, zero, load three, add four, store in f location five and then we'd have dot like and then what this would do is it take five and seven and add them together in fact these need to be zero indexed 
Silly me. So let's go to editor and it will be i equals zero. I is less than two five six. So this will be load three, add four, store five, and then we have dat three and dat six. And this would put the addition of these two, so we'd load location three, which is this. We'd add this to it, which is that. So zero four, line four. So we'd add this to it, and then we'd store that in location five. So we'd end up with data there in location five. That's the addition of the two. If I assemble that, we can't have that because I haven't selected an automaton. We assemble that. There we go. There we go. Right. Uh, our assembler is getting there. I kind of feel like I'm getting near to having something running for the first time. So what have we missed? We've missed... We've missed LSL and LSR, which would also go in this list here. Right. And our last one is branching. I feel like the branching could also follow the same thing here because we could branch to the memory address held by a register. We could branch to a memory address. Yes, so I think This is basically every other opcode, isn't it? So we've got dat no op covered, we've got LDA, we've got dat no op push and pop covered. Dat no op push and pop. We've got LDA STA, add sub ink deck and or XR LSL LSR. And then if we put branching into this as well, like that, that's everything covered. I think we've finished the assembler. I think we've finished the assembler. So we could do some sort of multiplication by saying... Um, no, I'm not going to write a multiplication. Let's just keep adding 1 to the value in the A register. So we're going to increment... I've just realized that we don't have the A register mapped, so we can't, like, say, ink A. Yeah, we need to map the A register. That's what that final memory location is going to be for. There we go. I have decided. A is a valid register. So here we could say ink A branch always to hashtag zero zero and if we actually select assemble that so we will increment a increment the a register one 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 zero one 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 
and then we'll branch back to 0, 0. Okay. Um, yes, we have finished the assembler, it looks like. So let's, um, let's shut down quick template because I don't need that open since we're not looking at the iPad. Right. I mean, build assembly logic, right? Okay. Um, let's get rid of that. You don't need to log the machine code. Let's choose a selected automaton by default is zero. So I don't have to remember to keep selecting it. Um, and let's also, once we've done setup, let's do, in fact, let's do select automaton zero. Cool. So, let's make, I think, our final script. And we're going to call it execute.js. No, we're going to call it FDE. We're going to call it FDE as in fetch to code execute cycle. And we're going to have a function which is perform FDE and this is going to take in an automaton we're going to do fetch to code and then we're going to do a function execute and all that our perform FDE is going to do is it's going to do fetch to code on the automaton execute on the automaton and then that's it I think so how is this gonna work do we want to do one FDE per per game update I think so right so let's do fetch to code first I mean, these are objects, so we could actually delegate this to like the automaton itself. So we could do something along the lines of fetch decode. I think that's how um, objects work. So W3 scores, I bet it's better than the MDN stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we just define a function like that. Okay. So we define a function fetch to code and what we're going to do is <laughs> what the fuck are we going to do? Excuse my language. So what we need to do here is we need to load the opcode and operand with the value 
and instructions held in the program counter. So we need a let's make a let's make a math folder, uh, a math script, and we're going to have a function um, binary string to deanery. And all this is going to do is take in a binary string. We're going to create a new var uh, total equals zero. Var current column equals one. And then we're going to say for var i equals binary dot length minus one i is greater than minus one i minus minus so we're going to start at the right hand side of the binary string we're going to iterate down through it and we're going to say if binary i equals one total plus equals current column current column plus uh, multiplied by two return total and then we're going to include math in our index.html so it's going to be our top level script refresh this and we're going to say binary to string to deanery 0011001 yeah perfect that works so now In FDE, we want to let's let's say we're going to do automaton dot fetch decode automaton dot execute the execute function here is going to be a nightmare. The fetch decode function is going to be relatively simple. So we're going to say. this dot registers binary string to deanery this dot registers pc uh, in fact now we're going to grab We're going to grab that, and that's the instruction. Val, what's val? Var equals this dot instruction. Binary string to deanery. This dot registers PC. So we're getting the program counter, which is this value here. We're converting it to deanery, and then we're getting that value from the instructions. And we're going to say this. Uh, how do we take the first four? Take first four characters of string. Substring one four. Try yourself. Substring E L L. So one four starts at location one one two three. So it's exclusive. 
So we want zero four. So this dot registers opcode equals instruction dot substring zero four and then we want this dot registers operand equals instruction dot substring four to instruction dot length and then we're going to say I mean, the problem here is that we're having to convert in and out of binary all the time. So we need a string. Uh, we need to write a function deanery to binary string. Pass in deanery. And so var uh, binary equals uh, empty string and so var current column equals 128 for var equals 0 i is less than 8 i plus plus if deanery greater than current column binary plus equals one deanery minus equals current column else binary plus equals zero current column equals current column uh, divided equal by 2 return binary huh. will this work <laughs> so deanery to binary string 32 16 7 uh, no, 7 doesn't work for some reason. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So what's wrong with 7? Why didn't 7 work? 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're 1 out here. Why are we 1 out? Why are we one out? Thirty two should be one zero 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 zero. So it needs to be if column greater than or equal to current column. There we go. Do we need to binary string sixteen zero one two three four? Five, six, seven, eight. Cool. I'm happy that that works. So now what we want to do is in here, so we want to take uh, in objects, we want to take the PC equals that. And then we want to say this dot registers PC equals 
binary string deanery to binary string PC plus one okay and then we need an execute which is going to look like that for now perform FDE on that automaton every game loop so uh, we're going to perform FDE Um hmm. when we're already drawing all the automatons we could just perform the FDE for each of them in here. do is we're going to attach we're going to attach a function called step and what this is going to do it's going to iterate over all the automatons and it's going to perform FDE in fact this this is useless we don't need this we don't need this at all um, I'm going to delete that and get rid of it in here. What we're going to do is we're going to take automatons I and we're going to perform FDE. And we're going to take automatons I dot execute and then we're going to say load automaton selected automaton so we're going to go through ex execute and then we're going to select the automaton uh, we're going to reload the data for the given automaton and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to attach our step button to the step function which we already have done so let's click on this it's already clicked on we're going to say LDA hashtag three STA hashtag four uh, sorry add hashtag four star hashtag five and we're gonna have that five that four so this should add let's have that as two let's have that as seven so this should add two and seven together we assemble that. What happens when we step? Perform FDE is not a function. Let's grab that. Fetch to code. It's just fetch to code. So let's run that. Put that in. Assemble it. Step. Cannot read property of undefined reading A. Right, it's because we need to pass in the object there instead of the number. Paste that and again assemble that step. Can I read properties of undefined reading registered? Select id automaton. I always get that wrong. 
assemble that step opcode LDA operand hashtag zero three so that is right the only problem is we're getting instructions instead of machine code we want that So, LDA hashtag zero three, STA uh, add hashtag zero four, STA hashtag zero five, and then we're going to have two dot zero two and zero seven. Assemble that step, step, step. It actually works. It actually works. It actually works. Okay, so our fetch decode works. We're fetching and decoding the instruction, and now we need to execute it. I mean, let's just straight up. Let's just straight up do it. So this machine code, this RAM actually wants to be 240 filled with that because we've got the special X, we've got the special opcodes. So we're going to check. We're going to do a load first. So load is zero 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 one so we're going to say if this so we're going to say instruction equals instruction equals this dot registers opcode and we're going to say I mean, how, how do we want this to work? I can do it naively just with, I think I'm going to build this badly. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actively build this badly. I'm going to like write a ton of if statements with just loads of different blocks. It's going to be super messy. Because I'm thinking I could do this more elegantly if I like, if I create anonymous functions within a, I could do it with anonymous functions if I created them within a um, within a dictionary, and then we could do a dictionary lookup on the opcodes value to find how it executes. But I don't think we're going to do that. For now, we're just going to say if instruction equals zero 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 one. which is load then we're going to get var operand equals this dot registers in fact we don't even need that let's just let's just do this I'm literally doing this as badly as I can and then the only way is up so if the register opcode contains 0001 then we want to execute uh, LDA and the way we execute an LDA is we want to check whether if binary string to deanery this dot registers operand is greater than or equal to and this is if it's a reserved memory location so from f 
zero, which is two forty. I've just realised that the assembler's actually broken because it would let you load the timer. No, no, that's right. In fact, now we want to go from F7 to FB, otherwise we just want to use... So we want to check if it's greater than or equal to 247 and it's less than FD which is 25. If it's less than or equal to less than FE, let's just do a greater than here. So if it's greater than 246 and it's less than 1, 2, 3, 246, 247, 248, 254. So that means we need this register map the other way around as well. In here. So A, B, C, F. A, B, C, F. PC HL and then we want a special one for if it's equal to two five three which is when it's the point to HL otherwise we just want to do something standard <sighs> right this is getting pretty complicated so if it's this then we're going to say this dot registers a equals this dot registers and this is going to be memory register map so we're going to grab memory register map this dot registers upper end so this is going to dereference whatever the upper end is in fact we don't even need this this is way too complicated we just need to say if memory register map dot includes
if the memory register map includes this dot registers operand so if the operand is in the memory register map then do that otherwise if it's this then this dot operand Ah, good lord, what are we going to do here? We need, basically these two are the same things. So we're going to do this in here. Instead. This dot register. So we want to dereference HL, so we're going to say this dot registers uh, operand equals this dot registers HL. And then we're going to say this dot registers a equals this dot ram, and this does need to be two five six. This dot ram at position binary string to deanery this dot registers operand <laughs> right this is getting so complicated but I think this is right so we're gonna say LDA hashtag zero three add hashtag zero four Store hashtag zero five. Assemble that, and when we step, it should load. Oh shit! Oh crap! <laughs> I've just realized that this needs to get read from memory. Oh, Lord. Oh, I messed up here. If it's dark, it needs to get injected into RAM. Because I've just thought that this isn't going to get read from the right place. Because we're reading from RAM when we do this. So when we assemble, we need var RAM equals array 256.fill 0000000000. And here, if it's dat, then we want this to be as it is. We also want ram i to be the binary string. Say automatons selected automaton dot ram equals ram, and then when we load it in the editor, we don't just want to do this. 
we also want to say say we want to load RAM in so we can say RAM plus equals automaton dot RAM I Let's grab that. And then we can say document dot get element by ID RAM dot value equals RAM. Why doesn't that work? So now if I do LDA hashtag 03, add hashtag 04, STA hashtag 05, when we store some dat at location 3, This is mental, this is really confusing me now. So let's put a 2 in there, we assemble that. Can I set properties of undefined RAM? definitely there. Yeah, I've totally gone about this in totally the wrong way because I haven't considered, whilst I've been designing my architecture, the fact that when you're loading data, you're loading it from RAM. You're loading it from memory rather than from the instruction memory. <laughs> I feel I've really messed up here. Right. So, uh, it's because I've not done a selected automaton there again. So, load hashtag 03, add hashtag 04. I mean, this will work, but it, it doesn't make any sense. We assemble that, we end up with, yeah, two at location three, which is what we wanted. So, what if we do this then? Dot zero two, and here we do BRA hashtag zero two. Okay, this works. It works. It doesn't make... The problem here is I'm trying... Like... I'm trying to make this really simple for novice programmers to understand. I don't think this is particularly simple anymore. I don't think it's particularly simple at all. But... 
Oh well. We're going to go with it for now. So we assemble that. And now what we should see is A gets a value of... Let's do something else. Let's have FF. Let's assemble that. That means that in our RAM we should have 1111111. Start at location 3. So now when I step, we should see 1111111 get loaded into A. <laughs> Memory rubbish register map dot includes is not a function. Of course it isn't, because it is a dictionary. So let's just get rid of them. We can't check if it's in there. I mean, there's probably a way of doing it, but... Um, some of that step. Yes! Check that out. We've got we've <laughs> we've got it. We've done it. Look, we've loaded FF in. So if we do F seven, assemble that and step. Oh, uh, if we click reset, we need we do need a reset function. But for now, if we do that, assemble it and step it. That seven F seven gets loaded into the assembler. That's it. That's our. F so we've um, implement um, first execute. Thanks, Luke. <laughs> um, implement first execute. Uh, implement execution for LDA. So implement fetching decode and execution for LDA. Right, so we have a working assembler that is able to execute the load command. Let's get this working. And there's this other issue that we had as well, right, where if we assemble, it gets rid of any white space. That could be a problem. God, this is going to be such a buggy mess, but we're getting there. Um, we need so I think the two things we really need to add to our assembler are going to be labels and getting rid of that white and not getting rid of that white space. Just sort of fill in that white space with no ops instead. And secondly, well, we need to implement all of our we need to implement all of our executions. So. If else, if this dot registers opcode equals zero zero one zero, and we're going to do this all the way down. We're going to implement each of these separately. So we're going to have zero zero one one zero one zero zero. Zero one zero one. Zero one one zero zero one 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 zero 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 one zero zero one one zero one zero one zero one 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 zero zero one one zero one 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 zero one 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 two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen which is gonna be Yeah, 
if no op. This is LD8, this is STA, and add was 0101, which is this one here, is add. So let's implement add next. So let's do this check, check if the operand relates to a register, this.register A. So we need to do something a little bit different here, what we need is we need to say var a equals binary string to denary this dot register a var b uh, var um operand equals binary string to denary this and then we're going to say this dot registers a equals deanery to binary string a plus operand. <laughs> Which won't work right now. We won't be able to tell if that works because we don't have any way of loading data into registers. Otherwise, if binary string to deanery this dot registers operand is greater than 253, then make the operand that. So then we're going to say the same thing here. Going to get A. Um, going to get the operand, it's binary string to deanery, but instead of it being that, we're going to have this. And then A is the same thing, it's going to be that. Right, does this work is the question. So we're going to start with 0, 2. We're going to have 0, 7. <laughs> Assemble that. Step. We load 2 into here. Step. Code is 0101. I've done this in star. Needs to be an add. So LDA3 add for star 5 dot 2 dot 9 7. Assemble that. Step. Step. Oh, 1001 is 9. So we haven't got any error checking. We're not got. We're not handling overflows with this or any of that stuff yet. But we have addition working. We have addition working. Now let's get storing working. So storing is going to look a lot like loading, but the other way round. So, so it's going to be that equals that. And that equals that. So LDA three ST uh, add four star five um, dot two dot seven assemble that step step. Step. We 
we've loaded this, we've added this, we've stored it there. There we go. We have now got a working working assembly. I can't really believe it. And that's taken me not as much time as I thought it would. So what do we want to build next? Um, because this is my simple test program. We've got, that's it, we've got an assembler working. So let's, let's, I mean, let's fill out the names of all of these first, just so that I can really quickly go through and do them. So we're going to push, pop. Add sub ink deck and or XR JMP JZ LSL LSR. Okay, so these are going to all be fairly easy to do so sub is just a copy of this or we do minus instead and we're gonna want that to overflow underflow so we're gonna want to say And say var sum equals a minus operand if a if sum is less than zero sum equals two five six plus sum While sum is greater than zero, sum e plus equals two five six. Sum. I feel like we can take that out of here. Put it into here. I think. This is in the wrong place because this is so this is a plus operand. How does scope work? Does it need to be this? Uh, while well, sum is greater than 255, sum minus equals 256. Although we could just say sum equals sum percent 256, I think, for that one. So if we grab this, we want to do the same thing. And here for sub, but we're going to do this as a minus, and we're going to say while sum is greater than, is less than zero, sum plus equals 256. I think that should work for overflow and underflow, I think. So we refresh this, and we make this 
FE, we make this 7. In fact, let's make that FF. When we step this, we should end up with should be 7 right F. or should it be 6 when it overflows it goes to 0 so if we add 1 if we add 1 it goes to 0 see if we add 7 it goes to 6 cool so that works and then if we try the same thing, but we're going to go with like 0, 2, minus 7, we're going to sub it, we assemble this, we step it, we step it, that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so minus 1, and then minus 6. Yes, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Does the standard subtraction works. So let's take something like 9 and take away 3. Step, step. That gives us 6. Cool. So that's subtraction working. <sighs> this is so messy. I'm aware of how messy this is, but I'm not really that bothered right now. <laughs> so increment and decrement are a little bit more complicated because it isn't just to the A register. It's always going to be the memory location. Just realized that we actually do need STA to happen in more than one place for registers. God, there's so many edge cases with this. <laughs> there's so many edge cases. Because um, if the operand relates to a register, we do want to do the STA like this, but at the same time, we also want to do this. We want to update the RAM location as well. We don't want to just update the register. We want to update both. We want to update the RAM and the... Yeah, so we want to do both. That's fine. And we need to do the same thing with ink and decks. I think that... This is the best one to use for increment and decrement. So, so first we need to read it and then we need to write it. Kind of feeling like I should have not done this. Kind of feel like I should have pointed to specific locations. Like I should have used. I don't know if in JavaScript I can just use pointers, but I feel like I should have just used a pointer to the RAM location. Would that work? You know, I've kind of overcomplicated it now. We're going to try and get that working quickly. So we're going to take this, and instead of doing that, we're going to point to a is this dot ram location. Two five seven, I think. Two four seven. Two 
all right. Two four nine. Two. And does that let me get rid of this check here? for all of them. Maybe I should have taken a uh, <laughs> maybe I should have taken a copy of this before I tried this change. Load three, add four, star five. Dot hashtag two. Dot hashtag zero seven. Let's grab all of that. Assemble all that. Step, step, step. We end up with data in the right place. Yes. Now instead of that, let's store it in B. Step, step, step. It has started in B, but it doesn't look like B is pointing to the right location. How do I use a pointer? <laughs> there we go. Yes, no, there is no pointers in JavaScript. There is no pointers in JavaScript. So what we need to do instead of this is ah oh, god how do I do this then I need it to live update every single time I mean, we could maybe just say update registers as a function that does this. So we do this to update all the registers, and we'll do it, we don't need to do it here, no we do need to do it here. Okay, so we're technically using pointers. Point, pointers with extra steps. Step, step, step. No. 
What is the problem there? Oh, it's because it needs to work both ways. Ah, oh, this is so bad. No. I'm leaving it how it was before. Just means that we have to, like, maintain two copies of everything. Which is a shame. Unless we just take copies of the registers and read them into memory. Because all that really is doing is showing the user where they are. So we'd say this dot RAM two four seven equals this dot registers A. So we do it the other way around. Nine, three, one, two, three. P C F. Right, John. Okay, so we do have this update registers function and we can call it whenever we it's only the editor that really needs to call it and we just do it here so we say automaton dot update registers. like that and then in here so we have load three add four store b dot two dot seven assemble that step it step it step it we get nine stored in B, but if we go look, we also get nine stored there. So this is zero. This zero 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 one one is the program counter. Yeah, cool. So we have we've mapped these registers technically, at least on the visual side. Cool. So. The next thing we're going to want to do I mean we can just keep writing this execute to be fair for each of the automatons. This is like the messiest code I've ever written. I need to build the stack as well at some point. Which is probably just going to be an array. Yeah, it's just going to be an array with, I mean, it can be as big as you want. Yeah, I'm not even going to, yeah, this dot stack equals that. I'm going to say this dot stack dot push this dot registers. A, this dot registers A equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we're going to just do this the other way around in here. Popping, we're going to say this dot registers A equals 
this.stack.pop. So now we're going to say load um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to say load six, push load seven, push pop pop dot seven dot. So what we want to see here is some of that. So we want to see six go into the A register. Why has A got zero one 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 instead of zero one one zero? What the fuck is happening there? Well, might be a bug with my Value string to deanery. No, it's not. It's just a copy of the string. What is going on there? What is going on there? Maybe we need to update registers there. What's, got, what's in that RAM location? 0110. 0, 0111. Why is 6 got 0111 in it? Oh, we're loading the data held at position 6, which is 7. Right, so of course it is. So we're loading this. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. So we step that. So 7, step it, gets pushed. Step it loads two, gets pushed, and then we should pop and get two, pop and get seven. Cool. So we got push and we got pop working. Now I feel like ink and deck should be relatively simple. Should just be add and sub no it won't it will be acting on individual registers so it's more like a load it's like a combination of a load and a store right we're going to skip increment and decrement we're going to skip and or xor we could do jmp and jz in fact, what did my example program have on it? It had branch Right, let's um I feel like doing jump instructions is a good idea. So, I feel like I've got this the wrong way around for doing the valid memory map, but it doesn't matter now, I've already, I've already done it. So I feel like this is very close to a load, but instead of loading it into the A register, we're loading it into the program counter. So JZ is pretty simple. If it's 1101, the opcode. No, JMP is simple. So JMP is as simple as 
um, this dot registers PC equals the memory register map location. So we jump to that, and we want PC there. And then the uh, this one is just if this dot registers A equals zero 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 then do our jump and I'm going to get rid of this comment all the way up because we've just repeated the same comment like a hundred times which isn't that helpful okay so Jay-Z this dot registers a is zero then update the program counter with the value held in the operand so load three add four JMP zero zero so this should load zero add oh no we want that zero zero dot zero one assemble that we really need to get the reset button working so step load zero add one jump back to zero zero so program counter should become zero zero load uh, and then we want to store that at zero six five four. This is why we need labels. So assemble that. Step one. I don't know why that step there, that jump, puts a zero in the accumulator. I feel like the accumulator should store its value. Anyway, so step load four five six. I oh, know we want to store it back in four. Step step. Step four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. In fact, we can get rid of that star now. We can do that. So every time we click let's assemble that. So now one, two. Four. Oh, that so needs to be three. Add four. God, this is why we need labels, everybody. So step this one, two, no. JMP one. Oh yeah, of course. 
that needs to be jumped. Okay, I'm actually, I'm actually getting confused by my own, <laughs> by my own language I've written. So we need to jump to an. Ad we need to specify the address in the address that where we want to jump to. So step. Now that would be add for, and then it would be jump for. There we go. Assemble that step. So that works. Jump works. And then I think jump of zero will probably work if we just do. I mean, jump of zero definitely works. I'm fairly confident on that. So we now have everything we need to write loops. So we don't have any immediate addressing. That's what was confusing me with this JMP. I was trying to use immediate addressing, but immediate addressing doesn't exist in our assembly language. Maybe it should. Maybe it would make more sense if it did. What do we think? I don't know if you're still there, Luke. What do we think about using immediate addressing? for the JMP and JNZ instructions, so for the jump instructions, rather than using this. I feel like it might get confusing if we use direct addressing everywhere else and then just use immediate for that one instruction. I don't even know if you're here, but if you are here, your input would be greatly appreciated. And if you're not here, then tough for me I suppose so I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm ready to call it a night I'm just gonna make sure I commit this um, set up execution for so what have we got now we've got LDA we've got STA push pop add sub jmp and jnz jz and what i'm going to do is i'm going to write a multiplication i think so we're going to load in a value we're going to add another value we're going to store it back to the first value. And I might use some knobs here. So let's load hashtag 0a. Let's add hashtag 0b let's store it back in hashtag 0a and then we want to load in fact that wants to be c load hashtag 0b we want to sub hashtag 0d which is going to be 1 we want to store that back in zero B and then we want to jump if zero to hashtag zero eight. Otherwise we want to jump to hashtag zero 
zero zero. No. Want to jump to not zero eight. Yeah, I'm going to make them, I'm going to make the Jay-Z instruction immediate. It needs to be, it needs to be, it's too confusing to think about otherwise. So, Jump to not zero to line eight, which would be no up. Otherwise, jump to zero, and then nine. So nine will also be no up, and then we want dot. Five. Dot. Six. So we're going to do five times six. Dot. Zero, and dot. Zero one, which is the addition. Copy all of that, assemble it. Uh, on line eight, provided data must be a register. That's not. That's no up. realize that that needs to be I because I changed it to no longer be I plus one it's that there that's the problem so Step. <laughs> well, this looks like it's not doing anything right. Right, so let's start this again. Assemble this. Let's step it. So load zero A should put five in. We don't want to. Uh, that should be that. That should be zero. There we are. Assemble that. Step. Load five. And that should load it zero. Zero is one zero one zero which is 12, which is that. Oh no, we did have that right. I've got this totally wrong in my head. So that should be zero, that should be five, and we actually need two more no ops for this to work properly. Because of, I've said, we're going to be starting at zero A, which is no, it's ten, so it should be loading that. I was right. I was right. 
So we should be loading five. Now we should be loading that. So we load this zero, we add five to it. Then we store it back. And then we load this. Take away that. Store it back. Yeah, that should that should be right. Assemble that step. So load five, add twelve, add five, which is run. And then we should be storing that back to location ten. So if we go to location 10, it should have 101 in it, which it does. Step again, gives us six. Sub one gives us five, and that should get stored back into location 12 yet yeah, so we've added five once now we're going to load it again and we're going to add another another five to it take another add another five add another five so we're waiting for the operand we're waiting for the program counter to get to eight There we go. So at that point, when the has eight in it, we should have a value of five times six stored, and that is thirty. Five times six is thirty. <laughs> it works. We actually have a work a working assembler. I am kind of listening, Luke says. I've got the chat open to moderate, but I'm playing some pie games, so I haven't been following along. Sorry. Uh, no worries, Luke. Thanks for moderating. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so we actually have... We've got a working assembler. What changes have we made? Or the error report in, and then we also tidied up the registers. We fixed that issue. So git add dot git commit dash m fix error reporting and switch to immediate addressing for branching. Right, I am pretty happy with where we've got to today. We've actually not only built the assembler, we've we've also started writing the execution. This isn't perfect, it's far from perfect. There's no error checking, there's no nothing in it. What I really wanna do next week is I wanna get this color and movement stuff working. So where we can set the color of the tile we're on and we can and we can do movement. I'm fairly sure this is Turing complete. In fact, I'm so confident it's Turing complete with the Jay-Z that I'm with jump on zero that I'm not even gonna bother making any further changes unless maybe something happens through the week and i realize that i've done something wrong i'm pretty happy with what i've got here so it's bang on 10 o'clock uh we've been doing this for two and a half hours we've built the assembler we now have some code execution going on the automaton can't move yet that's going to be what we do next week but we actually are able to do some some pretty complex some pretty complex stuff so we're able to load values from memory. We're able to add values from memory to the accumulator. We're able to do jumps. And this here, this is a simple program for doing multiplication. I'm so happy that that works. I'm so happy that it works. Um, yeah, absolutely buzzing. Like the the possibilities for this are just are just endless. I'm thinking about inputs. Like, could we basically 
make digits, like hand-drawn digits, essentially, in here, and then write a uh, and then write a program that gets the automaton to scan the tiles to find what the input is, like what the input character is. Like, can we can we get the automaton to do writing? Um, yeah, I think the possibilities for this are pretty pretty crazy we might end up needing to increase the address buses though is the one thing i'm thinking we might need more instructions which isn't the end of the world because the program counter is using no it would be a pain it would be a pain but yeah we'll see how much we can do with the current architecture this is a proof of concept this is at the start of the game development process we're working like this is us actually figuring out how this game is going to work how is it going to be satisfying to play how is it going to make sense to players so i hope you've enjoyed following along if you are with me um if you're watching online after the fact if you're watching this back thank you for watching through my series i'm also going to be trying to put some devlogs together which sort of summarize my progress each month but yeah um thank you for watching and i hope you have a great week Cheers.